So I have been uh, one of the first uh, doctors who've been using the POC in India. In fact, we have done about uh, more than 70 cases now. Initial experience has been fantastic. The quality of vision the patient's having is almost like a monofocal IOL, but with the presbyopic benefit. So that is the beauty of the lens and we've been enjoying using uh, POC. So I would say is mainly the quality. Right now, when you compare any other EDOF IOLs in the market, this has got one of the best quality of vision, which I feel is very important because we have to first look at why are we choosing these non-diffractive EDOFs? Because either the eye is non-pristine where you have some issues, whether there's hyoid abrasions, retina issues, glaucoma, so and so forth, or the patient is very concerned about the quality and he doesn't want glare and halos and so on and so forth. If that is so, then you want to choose the best, the lens which gives you the best vision quality, right? So that is where the POC comes into picture and that's where it shines. About the lens performance of POC in low light is very similar to a monofocal. We have not found significant, I mean, too much of a difference where the patients appreciate any kind of a contrast drop or dysphotopsia. It's very similar. Even we had certain visual quality questionnaires given to the patients who we have implanted the lens. We have not found any difference between a monofocal and a POC. It's been quite similar. A normal tendency is you compare an EDOF with an EDOF. But here we're not comparing an EDOF with an EDOF. We are comparing EDOF with a monofocal because that is the level of quality of vision it's delivering. A person who's not started a presbyopic practice this is the right lens to start off because it's a very forgiving lens and uh, it behaves with, like a monofocal, but you get that perspiopic benefit. Clinically, I don't think so there's any contraindications unless there's a, let's say there's a complication on the bed where the, there is a large PCR or posterior capsule and then I would say don't implant the lens. Uh, otherwise, if the patient is very specific, he wants a monofocal, and he doesn't want anything else, then simply go ahead what the patient wants. We shouldn't force some other technology onto the patient eyes. When you compare hitting the target 2020 with a monofocal as compared to hitting the target 2020 with a pure C, there are more chances of you hitting 2020 with a pure C. That's because it has a landing zone. So anywhere if you have a residual power of plus 0.5 to minus 0.5, you will still have 2020. While handling ADOFs, we need to remember the term maximum plus refraction because this is very, very important. All these lenses have a landing zone from plus 0.5 to minus 0.5. If you look at the defocus curve, we need to shift it as much as possible to the right. How do we do this is by doing maximum plus refraction. So what we do is we, do the, we refract the patient to 2020 and we see how much more plus can we add till he maintains 2020. And we keep that as the primary refraction and then we do the vision testing for distance, intermediate, near, and also refocus curve. So that time we are actually assessing the, the capacity of the lens. It's been performing really well actually. We are very surprised because usually a non-diffractive, there's a little bit of compromise, but uh, the distance we are almost getting 30% which are performing even better than 2020 in terms of the distance vision. The intermediate vision is uh, better than 6 by 9 or uh, lesser. And we have uh, near vision, 100% of the patients we have got uh, N8 or better. When we implant EDOFs, we need to really optimize our A constant. Once we start doing our cases, you look at how the patient is doing, try out maximum plus. Once you do the maximum plus, enter that data in your machine, optimize your A constant, and then do it so that you're, you know, uh, using the full potential of the lens. And the patients also have really good intermediate and near.